You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. Today we are talking about this ink, or rather the ink that comes in this bottle from Birmingham Pen Company. I've added my own little sticker on top because these are not labeled on the box. This is going to be Birmingham Pen Company's Boiler Steam. This is one of their new formulation inks. I reached out to them when they first announced these, or rather first put them on the old market, and I uh, said, hey, I'd like to check some of those out. I've really liked your inks in the past, and so they sent me uh, three of these. Uh, I've already reviewed one. That was Electron. Go back and see that review if you want to see how Electron did. This has, unfortunately, I think, some of the same characteristics that I found in Electron. Uh, I also have another one that will be coming up soon uh, called Fountain Turquoise, so be on the lookout for that in the near future. All right, so Boiler Steam, and indeed all of these inks from the Birmingham uh, Pin Company, which is in Pittsburgh, uh, have like this cool story behind them. And they have these cool names. Like this one is Boiler Steam. And if you look on the side, it has a whole story about the Pennsylvania Railroad and why uh, that's important to uh, Pennsylvania and maybe to Pittsburgh in particular, those kinds of things. And I think that is a very, very cool feature of these. And I've always liked that about their inks. Uh, when you open the bottle, which is a nice glass bottle, these are 30 mil bottles for nine bucks. So extremely reasonably priced, I think. Get that open there. Uh, you can see this is going to be a dark sort of teal color. I'm not sure why boiler steam would be teal. Maybe there's uh, maybe there's a connection, but uh, I'm not entirely sure what it is. But nonetheless, this is a very nice, uh, very nice bottle. Good presentation, cool story. Uh, I like what they're doing there, and they're making their own inks, which I think is really nice. Uh, now, here is what the ink looks like on some Rhodia. This is my normal Rhodia 90 or sorry, 80 grams per square meter paper, which is their sort of standard uh, dot grid paper. And here is what that ink looks like, uh, as you can see there. It's a uh, pretty dark color, this one, and uh, it is, I think, a dark sort of teal color, which is pretty cool. It's sort of, it leans on the green side of teal instead of the blue side, which I'm totally fine with. I think it's a nice looking color, if a little bit indistinct, uh, because it is kind of wet, and uh, it does tend to get very, very dark very quickly. So uh, this is the pen that I've had it in. This is a Narwhal School Kill uh, or School Kill. I'm not really sure if there's an L in there or not, but School Kill, there's so many L's in that word, which is a pretty cool pen that I picked up uh, when they introduced it uh, last year at a pen show. Uh, and I've had it in this. It doesn't have a nib size on the nib. They only have one size of nib, but it's basically like uh, kind of like a medium. Uh, so no problem there. It's a pretty normal uh, sort of nib in my usage and I thought it would kind of go well with this boiler steam thing. I, I thought it was neat. Okay. Also, did I get this in Philly? I may have gotten this at the, I did, I got this at the Philly Pin Show, so maybe that, uh, maybe that was my connection when I did it. In any case, uh, this uh, ink is on the wet side, I think. I haven't had any problems with flow, and indeed it seems to flow a little bit hard. If they dialed back on that a little bit, maybe this color would be a bit more distinct and less, uh, less, uh, less dark, I would think. Performance, uh, and this is where I have a problem with this ink a little bit, and that's that it shares, I think, too much with Electron. Uh, you can see up here, this was Electron, and I kept putting it in different pens because I like this color, but I couldn't really get it to behave very well. Like, it just bleeds and uh, spreads. You get feathers on a lot of different papers. Uh, Birmingham Print Co. Uh, boiler Steam is down here. This is, of course, 20-pound recycled paper, 20-pound, 30% recycled copy paper, uh, and so it's not great. This paper is bad. However, I do get these kind of results on a bunch of different papers. Uh, in fact, it doesn't, I don't think, behave so like you can see little dots coming through here on rodeo which is pretty uncommon i've had uh feathering and uh, spreading although not so much bleed from some other papers as well and so i just uh i don't love this ink unfortunately and i really wanted to but uh this one just bleeds right through uh, this copy paper just like electron did uh, even in a, this sort of medium nib here. And I think maybe if it wasn't so wet, maybe some of those surfactants or whatever are what is causing that. I'm not an ink scientist, uh, but that's that's kind of my guess. So if you're using this on good paper, you'll probably be just fine as long as you like the color. Um, qualities, mild shading, I say here. You can see a little bit of shading here and there, 
but not much and only on certain papers. I also could add, I guess, some sheen. We'll see a little bit of sheen from this on our Tomoe River later on. Uh, and like I said, 30 bucks for, uh, 30 bucks, 30 mils for nine bucks is a darn good price. I think no problems there at all. Uh, I just wish that the performance was just a touch better. All right. So let's do our water drop test. Take a look at the chromatography and then look at some inks that are relatively, uh, similar to this. Let's get our syringe out, bloop some water on this thing. There we go. You can see some of it coming up, but I'm not uh, too worried about all of it coming up or anything like that. It does look like there's still lines and all that sort of thing there. Let's go ahead and blot this. Blot, blot, blot. <laughs> Getting a lot of blue on my paper towel here. Lots and lots of blue. Okay, so while a lot of blue came up and a bunch of blue, like some lines and stuff came up here, which is interesting. I get this all the way dry. Mostly. Uh, this is still totally legible. It's very dark, but it's totally legible. So is it water resistant? Yeah, kind of. Uh, I didn't see like big swashes of color that stuck around after I blotted it up or anything. Uh, so look, if you spill a glass of water or, or coffee or whatever on your work, this will still be there, which is cool. Good job, boiler steam. I like that. Uh, did it come through the other side when I put some water on it? Mm, no more than it already had. So just a little bit here and there uh, on some lines, especially where it crisscrosses. Is that on the dot? I guess where it kind of came through it was crisscrossing on dots, which is interesting. Hmm. All right. Uh, so here is the chromatography for this ink, which I think is pretty darn cool. Uh, it starts out very, very dark down here and then sort of fades up this way and you get this blue color here, uh, which is, uh, I think, really what washed away and you're left with this down here. So that's pretty, pretty neat, I think. Uh, this brilliant blue up here. I really like this color. All right. Uh, so let's see it on a couple of other papers before we look at uh, ink swatches. Uh, here it is in my Tomoe, sorry, my Tomoe River ink journal, which is right here. Uh, you see I put this and Electron in pretty close together. Electron, you can definitely see some like red sheen. And there's a couple of places on boiler steam. I can't really tell if this is coming uh, out on the, the camera or not, but just a little bit of a like a coppery sort of sheen in there, but you don't really see it anywhere except for a few tiny spots. So I'm not really gonna say this is a sheening ink, just you happen to see a little bit of that occasionally. I think it looks okay on here, but a little bit muddy. Uh, I, it's It looks a lot like, like Shop Denim Blues actually has a lot in common with it, although I didn't see that on the, the swatches. It looks kind of the same-ish on Tomoe River, which is interesting. And then, uh, this is my Inky Fingers currently inked notebook. This is, of course, wheat straw paper. And uh, here it is in that notebook. Uh, I didn't try this in multiple nibs like I did Electron because, uh, well, I just kind of didn't. I figured I knew uh, what, this ink, what this nib was like because I've used it for a while. Um, but you can see here, this actually, I think looks kind of better on here. It seems like it gets a little bit more, uh, like soaks in or uh, something more than the Tomoe River. And so you get more of this like distinct teal color, I think. Did it come through this? Uh, no, it didn't. Looks okay. And here, I think it looks distinctly different from Shop Denim Blues, which definitely looks more bluish as opposed to this teal. So different papers really do matter for ink, man. Really matters. Okay. So there's my Colodex card for this color right there. I've got uh, here Franklin Christoph Franklin Green, which I thought was going to be closer. This does lean a bit more green, but it has some of the same base colors, uh, I think, in common, although this looks less... Uh, less close now than it did when I first pulled it. Uh, another Franklin Christoph color I pulled because I think it was in the same sleeve was this one, which is Midnight Emerald, uh, which is definitely a lot lighter and more teal, but I think it's the same kind of thing going on in these two inks, although less saturation here on the Midnight Emerald. Uh, then we have Straits Pens. This is Honest Inks Sad Stormy Swedish Sea, which, I, man, that is some kind of name. Huh? Those guys name inks real interestingly, which definitely leans more green, I think, especially over here here and it has a distinct red sheen that is missing in the boiler, boiler steam. Although you can see a little bit of it right here, but it's pretty faint. Definitely more of it in the, uh, the Swedish seas here. This also fades a lot lighter than boiler steam ever would. Next up, uh, this is Chesterfield ink. This is Chesterfield teal, which uh, Chesterfield is, I think, uh, one of the, the ink uh, lines that was run by what... Um, 
but a precursor to the Birmingham Pin Company. I'm fairly sure that's true, uh, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time since uh, since that time, but those are actually fairly close. This definitely leans a bit more green. Definitely on my camera, it's looking a, little, a lot more green uh, than it does uh, than this one does. This looks more blue. Then here we have uh, Ackerman uh, 24, which under the bright light now is not even close. Look at that one out of here. And then this one, which I thought was kind of interesting uh, as a as a comparison, uh, Yamadori, which is definitely a bluish teal as compared to the greenish teal of the boiler steam. So not at all close, but man, teal is such a wide ink gamut, I think. Um, and like down here in these bits, you can definitely see that it's pretty close, but then up here it turns blue. Really weird. Okay, so teal is one of those spaces that is very particular for inks. And uh, so if you dig this color and you're gonna keep it in a pen, uh, maybe you put it in a bit drier pen than I did and uh, keep it on the good paper. I, and you like this color, I think this might be a good one for you. The prices are nice and I like that they're making their own inks. And I think that, uh, give it a little bit more time, I think um, Birmingham Pen Company is really going to uh, uh, really uh, make some cool stuff. So they got the colors. They just need to work on the, the feathering and spreading a little bit. All right, that's it, folks. I'll see y'all later. Peace out. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, etc. YouTube stuff. Bye again.